The Crate Mark II and the Crate Phantom. Very similar ships, yet very, very different. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we're going to take a look at the two crate ships, the Crate Mark II and the Crate Fancy. We're going to put them up side by side, we're going to compare the stats, we're going to see which excel in which areas. So let's dive right into it and let's start by having a look at the price. The Crate Mark II comes in at 42.4 million with the Crate Phantom coming in at 35.5 million. This makes the Crate Mark II almost a third more expensive than the Crate Phantom, but is that price really justified? If we take a look at the core internals here listed in the same order that they are shown in game, being the power plant, the thrusters, the FSD, the life support, the power distributor, the sensors, and finally the fuel tank, we see that the two ships are exactly identical. And that means that all the modules can be transferred from one to the other. And actually these also share internals with the Python. That means the Crate Mark II, the Crate Phantom, and the Python can all share internals. Which is quite neat if you're not really sure which of the three ships you want, you can engineer modules and freely swap between them. However, if we move down to the optionals, there is some slight changes. We can see they have the same number of optional internals, very, very healthy number here, nine optional internal slots. But the Crate Mark II does have a slight edge here over the Phantom, where we can see if you go from the Mark II down to the Phantom, you do get one of the class six slots being downgraded to a class five and a class four slot also being downgraded to a class three slot. So slightly better internal layout for the Mark II than the Phantom. Nothing major unless you're gonna go and do some cargo hauling. But again, if you want a medium sized cargo ship, go for a Python. And if we move down and talk about the hard points, we can see here that the Crate Mark II comes in with three large and two mediums with the Phantom only having two large and two mediums. So you lose one large going from the Mark II down to the Phantom. So, so far it does seem like you do get a little bit for your money with an extra hard point and some better internals. If you move down to utilities, however, it's pretty much the same. They have exactly the same number of utilities of four. However, if we begin to look at the hull mass, we will see here that the Crate Phantom is actually significantly lighter than the Crate Mark II. This, of course, is reflected in the jump range, as we can see here. And I should say this jump range is with all internals stripped, all hard points, all utilities are stripped, all the core internals are derated apart from the frameshift drive which is a rated engineered with long range and mass manager and we can see here yes you do get about five oh, sorry yeah five light years extra jump range out of the phantom compared to um to the mark ii and that is of course because of that um less mass but it's worth keeping in mind here that this is probably also going to be the risk will also mean that the crate phantom has a longer range before it runs out of fuel. I mean, they both have a class five fuel tank as we saw before, and with the same size uh, FSD, same size fuel tank, but a lighter ship. That means you will get a better jump range out of the Phantom. And the Phantom is actually a pretty good jump ship. It can actually get some very, very respectable jump ranges. And if we move down to the multi-crew slots, we can see here, of course, the Crate Mark II has three seats on the bridge, U plus two extras, where the Phantom only has one additional seat. It's also worth mentioning here that the Crate Mark II does have the ability to fit a fighter hangar, something that the Phantom does not, further putting the, Phantom, the Crate Mark II ahead as a combat ship compared to the Phantom. Well, let's go over and let's talk about some of the defensive stats and let's see if the trend continues and starting by looking at the base shield. So this is the shield hit points that is used when a shield generator is fitted. This is the thing that's being modified by the shield generator. Because the two ships have very similar internal loadouts, this is a pretty good comparison between where the two ships are. If we look again, we can see that the Mark II has about 10% more shields than the Phantom. Again, putting it in as a more combat capable ship. However, if we go down and look at the armor hardness, something odd here. Notice how the Mark II only has 55, only has 55 um, armor hardness, whereas the 
Phantom has 60. 60 is really, really good. 60 puts it up on par with ships like the Drop Ship and the Federal Assault Ship. And it's only five lower than pretty much all of the Alliance ships. Like an Anaconda even has 65 armor hardness. If you're not familiar with armor hardness, if you look at the weapon, they have armor piercing, armor penetration. If their penetration is higher than the armor hardness, well, it goes straight through. If, they, if it's lower, then you get a reduced damage because you're hitting a target with more hardness than you have penetration. If we move down to the base armor, again, we can see here that the Mark II does have better armor uh, compared to the Phantom. And if we look at the heat capacity, so that is how well the ship handles heat, how much heat it can build up before it reaches 100%. We can see they both have 300 heat units of heat capacity. It is worth mentioning that, of course, with the Mark II having that extra large hard point, slightly larger internals, it's a pretty good chance that the Mark II is going to feel like it's hotter than the Phantom, even though they have the same heat capacity, simply just because the in most situations, the Mark II will be generating more heat than the Phantom. So that's worth keeping in mind here. And finally, let's have a look at the maneuverability. Of course, here we would expect the Phantom to excel because it is a lighter ship. And if we look at the base speed, indeed, it is also faster. Not by much, just 10 meters a second, but faster nonetheless. If you look at the actual maneuverability stat, the rolls, pitch, and yaw, they are identical. That means the two ships handles really, really well. Well, both the crates are known to be very maneuverable ships already, so these are definitely very, very good numbers. So where does it put these two ships? Well, obviously the Crate Mark II is a very capable combat ship. There is, of course, no lack of medium-sized combat ships in Elite, but it is still one of my favorites. But it still puts the Crate Phantom in kind of a weird position, because it's really competing for space here, because there's so many other ships around it that kind of does the same, but maybe slightly better. Like, it's not... If you want a combat ship, well... And you have the option here that there are plenty of others that are better than the Crate Phantom, just the Crate Mark II here being an, uh, being one of them. I mean, yes, you get slightly more speed, which could be useful in some situations, but you sacrifice both firepower, internals, and lots of other things. And it's not really a utility transport ship either. I mean, there you have both something like the Python, just to, to mention, that has way better internals, giving it a much larger cargo capacity. And it's also really crowded when you are competing with exploration ships. Well, you're competing with something like the Asp Explorer, even the Diamondback Explorer, even though, yes, it does have the, that horrible, horrible fuel scoop size, but, but still, you're having plenty of other options in this um, field. I guess, basically, if you like to have a exploration ship with a little bit of combat capabilities, but you want something bigger than a Diamondback, then I guess the Phantom is not a bad choice. Though I should say, when I had to fit an exploration ship for my Colonial, the Crate Phantom was my ship of choice. But I chose the Phantom because, well, there's nothing like a new ship. When I had to create that build, I have never really spent a lot of time in the Phantom. I've tested it, of course, in the bubble, but I've never taken it out for a longer trip. And of course, that really good maneuverability is also very, very nice to have. Do let me know in the comment section what other ship comparisons you would like to see. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.